hopefully you've watched the video on the background information of the taxonomic classification service and also the one on uploading reads. But what we're actually going to do in this video is submit a job and we're not going to upload any reads. Instead, we're going to use a number from the sequence read archive. And this is tied to those samples that we talked about in the introduction that was the study by Street et al. who looked at samples from people who had had infection following orthotic or prosthetic replacements. And we're going to look at one of those samples. So I just want to show you the information, what it looks like. This is the sample that we're going to use. If you want to write this down or watch the video and copy it so you can do it along with me, but I'll say it to you now. It's ERR7916262. And I first want to show you what it looks like in the sequence read archive so that when you're doing these things, you can figure out what to run, because there are a lot of things that are on these pages. So this is the overall number, but this is what you want, which is the run number. And it tells you how big it is. So it's in megabases, and it's paired, and it's Illumina. And if you wanted to know more about it, sample 187, you could click on this. This takes you to biosample. So you could click on that. And it loads the biosample and it tells me where the sample was collected from, from a human, and other information and the dates that it was collected. If I go back and I wanted to find out more about the project, I could open the abstract, but I could also click on the bio project here. So I click on that and that's telling me all the information. So I can click on this and note it says nanopore sequencing. They did both nanopore and Illumina sequencing on this. Sometimes they also put in the publication, but that didn't happen on this one. So we have that run number. I want to go to the Bacterial and Viral Bioinformatics Resource Center. What I want to do is click on Tools and Services up here, and under Metagenomics, I want to click on Taxonomic Classification, because we're going to find out who's in this sample, and by who I mean the bacteria, viruses, whatever else we may be able to find. So I click on this service, and this is the loading page for it. And if you scroll down, you can see that the submit button is white because we don't have any data in here. It'll turn blue when it's ready to submit something. We could submit paired reads or single reads or our SRA run number, which is this one, the ERR7916262. And notice when I put that in, it gives me a sample identifier here. You can change that if you want. I can say UK, United Kingdom. Whatever helps you, this is to help you remember what you've loaded. Because if you're using the system a lot, I especially need different words to cue into me exactly what I'm looking at. Now I need to move this into the selected libraries box. And I do that there. And you notice there was a brief message that popped up where they go back to the sequence read archive and make sure that it's a valid run number. And if it wasn't, it would pop up a message of this. Let me also point out that this service is pretty terrific because you can add multiple run numbers, and we'll do that in a later exercise so that you can compare things across samples within the same experiment or different experiments, whatever you want. So I like that a lot about this service. So we have some reads here, and still not blue down here at submit, so we have to do the parameters here. And notice that there are two types. You can do whole genome sequencing, or 16S ribosomal RNA. Well, this is a whole genome sequencing, so we're going to leave it clicked at that. 
and the analysis type, it says microbiome analysis, or if I click here to open the drop down box, I could do species identification. But because I think this is a mixed sample, I'm going to do microbiome analysis. Now, here's another choice you have to make. What kind of database? So you can choose either the BVBRC database or the Kraken 2 standard database. Now, let me tell you that I always try everything. This is a free resource. It's just time, not even your time, because you can do other things while you're waiting for these jobs to process. So I like to look at everything and see if the results are different or what's giving me what I believe to be the best results. So right now I'm going to click on BVBRC database because like I told you, I'm going to run all of them. All right. Filter host reads. You can choose to do this or not, but we know that this came from a human. So we could click on the down arrow and then click on Homo sapiens, and that will filter those reads out. So it's only looking at microbial reads. So then there's the confidence interval. And let's click on this information icon. We haven't clicked on one of those yet. So you click on that and it tells you that the confidence interval is at 0.1. And so what this is doing is it's going to put the reads that are in that particular confidence interval at the different taxonomic levels. And you can make it a lot more strict or even less strict, but let's keep it at 0.1. Although I may try submitting jobs later that make it tougher to see what happens. Now, this is an interesting one. You can save all the reads, the KMERS, the KMERS are within the reads, right? It's a smaller subset. All the reads that mapped to things within the system. And you can also save the unclassified sequences, those that didn't map to anything. And you can manipulate those downstream if you want. We're just testing this out. So let's try everything. So we're going to save the classified sequences. We're going to save the unclassified sequences. And now we need to have an output folder for this to put this in. I'm going to create a new folder for this. This is brand new job. And I want it in a spanking clean new folder. So to do that, I click on the folder icon here. And I'm going to click here to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it Street Meta Genome Orthotic. And because I work with a lot of programmers, they never like to see a space, so I've sort of gotten in the habit of doing this. So I'm going to create that folder. Now I could sort things alphabetically from my folders to try to find it because each of these column headings are sortable. But what's really easiest is for me to click on the created because I just created this. And this shows you my earliest folders and how long I've been using the system in this one. So I'm going to click on that and say, OK, and that's where the job is going to be. And I always like to put in the sample here so I know what it is. Don't just put test or something because you'll never remember what it was, especially if it's your data. If it's this data, you don't care. Well, you may care very much, but the odds of your publishing on this are very remote. Let me put it that way. So caring is stuff that you might publish on. So you want to be sure to be able to find it, especially if you've run, look down over here, more than 6,500 jobs. You want to be able to remember what you called this thing because believe me, it gets muddled after a while. Okay, so we have this. I want to say it was microbiome and BVBRC data filter point one. Why do I not put the point in? Because I'm afraid it, of the period, it might mess things up. And you may be saying, why is she going to all this trouble putting all this stuff in the name? Because generally, I, I'll remember what it looked like if I see everything. And I won't be looking because remember, I'm going to try all these permutations of this. 
So I want to be sure that I've got it all correct when I submit this thing, that I can find it. And you know what I'm going to do right now? Because I'm going to show you a trick just between you and me of how you can redo these jobs pretty quickly. So I'm going to copy that. Now, look, we've got the submit button here. It's blue. That means we can submit the job. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And notice it gives me a message. It's saying it's submitting the job. And I generally sit here and wait until it says, oh, you've successfully submitted it. But then look, right away, this has turned blank. So at this point, I could submit another job. So let's do that. I'm going to change this to the Kraken 2 database. Leave every, well, you know, at this point, yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll keep the classified and unclassified reads. And I'm just going to put that name in there. But then I'll go in here and I will say Kraken data. Cool, huh? And then I'm going to submit that. That is one of my greatest tricks to show you guys, is that when you're on this page, if you go away from this page or reload the page or go someplace else, you have to do everything all over again. But if you do it this way, you can just keep running jobs. And when I'm trying to do different permutations on things, I'll keep doing this. For example, let me set it back here to the BBBRC database. And this time I'm going to set it to 0.9. I've never messed with the confidence interval before. I want to see what happens and we'll do that together. So now I can submit it again and we're off to the races. So remember these were megabytes. This is going to take a while and I've got three jobs going and you're in a queue. We're all in a queue. I don't get special preferences. You don't get special preferences. And so if there's a lot of activity and a lot of people running jobs, you may have to wait. So I don't want any tickets submitted saying, I submitted my taxonomic classification job five minutes ago and it still hasn't finished. I don't want you to do that stuff. Wait. You may have to wait hours. In fact, I'm not going to look at this until tomorrow because I don't think it's going to run until then. But then when it does, we're going to have some fun comparing these things. So I'll see you then. Be patient. In fact, kick back. Don't do any more analysis of at least taxonomic classification for this evening Go watch a movie, go watch a video, not one of those crazy BBBRC tutorial videos. Watch something fun and then we'll resume tomorrow and look at the results. See you then. Bye. <laughs>